Welcome to the 99 Hustles Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Garter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we are joined by um, a stock trader, um, Isaac Suffering. Um, he is a very successful stock trader, um, and he teaches other people to how, how to do, how to follow in, in his footsteps a little bit. I, Isaac, how, how's it going, man? How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. And we're, uh, we're pleased to have you. This is actually, I think, our first uh, stock trader, um, entrepreneur on, on the show. So definitely cool, interested cool. in, um, uh, kind of getting your, your thoughts on a lot of the things I feel like tw- this, this year so far, uh, stocks have been a, a v- very hot topic. So, uh, definitely want to get your insight on that. Um, but before we, before we start, um, Isaac, you want to give us a little bit of a background on, on who you are and, and how you got to this point? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so it started for me back in, I like to start the story back in January, even though I really didn't start trading until May 2020. And I say January because, you know, I'm a student athlete. I play ball at Howard University. Oh, where? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, still, you still go to Howard, man? I'm, I'm, we, I'm in the D.C. area, man. I live in, uh, I, li- I used to live in Silver Spring. Now I'm in Alexandria. Yeah, I'm actually like in the off-campus apartment right now. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> word. Crazy. Yeah, so... You know, and I actually transferred to Howard. So between okay. that, I transferred mid semester from my last school. So I went I went home during, you know, December, you know, yeah, end of December, January. And really, you know, I, I hate, you know, I always start because I hate asking my mother for money. Right. Hate it, you know, because, you know, I, I want to be independent and I can't feel like I can be independent if I start to ask for stuff. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Even though, you know, at the time I'm 19, you know. And I'm like, okay, you're 19 years old. You're not supposed to be able to like completely provide for yourself and things like that, right? But I was like, man, forget that. I really want to do that. So what I did was, you know, I'm, I'm back at home. You know, my schedule is, you know, I wake up early in the morning. I hit the gym. After the gym, I go get something to eat. I'm doing Instacart. I'm doing Instacart, Uber Eats. Right. Midday, mm-hmm. midday, I go back to the gym, 1 to 3, 3.30, maybe 4. And then for the rest of the day, I'm at, I'm Instacarting all day all day you know i eat real quick instacart all day maybe i'll go back to the gym at night day when you know maybe there was a slow day i stay a little bit longer and just do instacart for the rest of the night but that was me until i want to say beginning of january all the way until mid-february end of february and then as you know like the the covid was kind of starting to be a hot topic right you know what is it is it real is it a scam like what's going right. on with COVID? Right. like we're hearing like cdc says wear masks cdc then says don't wear masks like, nobody <laughs> yeah, knows yeah. <laughs> So, and then my, my aunt, she's a, she's a, she's a doctor. And at the time I was in Charlotte because, um, that's where, you know, I kind of claim my basketball identity. So all, mm-hmm. all the gyms and stuff were there. So I was staying with my uncle because he lived, you know, he's a basketball guy too. So we were just working out. We got hit with COVID. So I stayed there and, you know, I couldn't, you know, obviously I couldn't do Instacart anymore. You know, I had to protect myself, protect my family. Uh, couldn't do Uber Eats, none of that. So I'm at home, right? And I'm not gonna say, you know, my goal was to have enough money to go to school and be okay, be comfortable. Yeah, but you know, I'm not. I, no one was expecting that, so I didn't have, you know, obviously I didn't have the funds that I wish I had, right? So I was like, okay, you know. And my uncle had mentioned one day, he said, "Yo, man, this is ridiculous because we're never gonna in our lifetime, most likely, we'll never have a time where." we literally have 24 hours a day to do whatever the heck we want. Mm. Aside from, you know, we have to stay in the house, but how many times do you just to wake up and be like, what the heck do I want to do today? And be able to do just that. Right. And, you know, so I was working out, trying to do, you know, still work out at, at, at the crib and stuff. And I was like, man, I'm just thinking, yo, I don't, I'm still like, I'm broke. Right. Uh, I'm 19 years old at the time or end of February. So I turned 20. I was already, I was 20 years old. I'm like, yo, what the, like, well, I got to do something. So first I started off with an online store, you know, drop shipping. Shopify. Then, no, yeah, no you, what made you, what made you start into that? Because I seen it. I mm-hmm. seen it all the time. And, and, and ads. Being, yeah, the ads and, and being an entrepreneur is, is not something that I just, just kind of jumped into. It's something I've always wanted to be. Got so I knew about drop shipping way back, you know, probably when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. But I never, you know, I wasn't really you good. You the time to really look into it. 
the time. I didn't have the, the, the experience. There's so much stuff that I didn't know. So I'd kind of just be jumping into something, not knowing what the heck I'm doing. Right. And, you know, I, I, I never I don't have I still don't have a mentor, but I never really had any guidance when it came to that. Because no one in my family, well, there's only a few people in my family who are entrepreneurs. Okay. But none like, you know, none like the way I'm doing it, right? Sure. So I'm, I'm I'm doing this online store and it's going okay. Like, you know, I, I only have about two hundred dollars, maybe one seventy five, two hundred dollars to my name. You know, so then I'm thinking about okay, I have to pay this monthly subscription for Shopify. Right. That's like twenty nine, thirty bucks. You know, I have the products. I'm drop shipping, so I never have to get the products. But then, you know, when someone orders something, I have to pay obviously the cost of the product, get a little bit of profit margin. Yeah. But then I didn't take into account like okay, I have to advertise the store, run ads, <laughs> yeah. and then and running ads is 100 what you need to be doing. But it's yeah. hard to do when you, you don't have capital up front to don't have the money to do it because a lot of times when you're running ads, you need to have trial and error, right? You need to see right. what works. Right. And I didn't have I didn't have money just to be to do trial and error. <laughs> trial and error, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So so it's it's actually crazy because I wasn't so much like I, I'm when I when I'm focused on something something I, I'm tunnel vision, right? So I'm like, yo, I'm gonna make this work. I'm up all hours of the night working on the website, like I'm, I'm making it look good. And it's, it's it's it was a really good website. I'm not even gonna lie. But what was the name of the store? Um, it was like anime yeah i was i was focused on the niche so like anime was my niche so i was okay, kind of okay. anime something right i don't even remember yeah, it was anime yeah. something. <laughs> and and so i was i was working on it and then i came to a point where like man you know i'm not gonna run any more ads mm-hmm. you know there was times where i was like yo let me use this credit card instead of using my actual money just to run ads sure. and so i was using my credit card but then I didn't really have the money to pay off the credit card at the end of the month. So I was like, oh, man, I can't be doing that. Yeah. messing up my credit. Right. So I'm like, OK, I stopped that. And then, you know, I, I had about one hundred seventy five left. I'm like, OK, I have no choice. I have to, like, figure something out. Right. I have got, to something's got to stick. <laughs> Say again. Yeah. Like something's thinking, gotta like, stick. I, I got to find some hustle to, to make this work. Exactly. And so I'm thinking like, yo, what the heck can I do? Like, and, and at the end of the day, like I'm thinking I have a phone, I have Wi-Fi, and I have, you know, time. <laughs> time and social media. Yeah, so I yeah, can figure yeah. something out. And I happened to be scrolling on Instagram and saw the ad for like acorns, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you guys are familiar with the acorn. It's, I see it all the time, TV yeah, yeah. or whatever. And it said, yo invest makes a little money right i didn't really know much about i didn't know anything about the stock market but you know i look at it i'm like hmm, okay i downloaded it and it said um it, it had this link you know referral you know get five dollars so i sent it to my best friend yeah and my best friend hit me and said oh go ahead uh, i was gonna say yeah their, their uh affiliate program is crazy so everybody hit the link that's in the youtube video description yeah. right, pop up right about now <laughs> <laughs> your affiliate program is crazy <laughs> go, go ahead so you, you were referring your friend yeah i just referred him and you know i might have sent it to like five different people just because like maybe i can get mm-hmm. 20 dollars, 25 dollars yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And he actually hit me back said you already have it but you trying to you trying to start investing and mm-hmm. I know him. He don't know nothing about investing. <laughs> but, but I'm like, I'm like, man, like, I don't really know. Like, I'm just, I just downloaded it. Man. I'm trying to come up off yeah. something, right? And he, he's in the same boat. You know, he ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. We both 20 years old. And now we're like, okay, let's learn. Mm. So we come across. So at this point, he doesn't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money. I have about, like I said, 175, maybe. And so we come across his stock market course uh, by Chris Johnson. And at the time, at the time, it was twenty five dollars. We went half on it because, you know, twenty five dollars, a lot of money, a lot of money. Yeah. Right. 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 We went half on it and we learned about it. And I was like, okay, it was a really good course. And when I actually started to, you know, let me download Robin Hood. Let me hop in a stock. You know, I hopped in like GoPro or like AMC, something Fitbit, something small. It was like five dollars. Right. I put put like ten dollars in it. And, I, you know, I bought me a share of GoPro and I'm looking at it and I'm like, OK, you know, went up two pennies. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> making, making a, some like great decisions. But I was like, man, this is not going to work because then I'm looking at Nike. I'm looking at Disney. I'm looking at Amazon, Tesla. And these stocks are like, well, not Tesla at that time, but I'm looking at these yeah. stocks. They're expensive and, stocks. They're blue chip expensive stocks. Yeah, yeah, they're expensive. I'm like, yo, you mean I have to pay one hundred fifty dollars for one share? Yeah. that 
that and Lord, Lord, who knows when that's going to move up. Right? right. And so what I did was I, I'm still studying because I'm like, OK, th this is going to be, you know, what is going to be. I need to lock in and focus. Like I need to learn this. And he actually hit me up and says, yo, I saw this one dude say something about option trading. So, so <laughs> you, should, you should check this out. And so I check it out. And I'm looking, I'm seeing people like, yeah, I paid, you know, it, it's cheaper than actually, actually buying shares. Although it poses more risk, you can turn a little money into a lot of money if you make the right decisions. Right. And so I then I'm, I'm locking in on options trading and, you know, I, I, I learned I learned a little bit about it. I think I know what I'm doing. I throw out of my one at this point, I probably have like 150 out of, out of 150. I put everything I had in the stock market. I was like, I'm not going I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, you know, no expenses right now. So I'm just going to put everything in there. So I put my whole 150 in there and, you know, I, I made a dumb decision. I decided to buy a, like a Disney, Disney call option for $60. That Disney calling right now? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just had earnings. So they're probably calling right now. To uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And but but long story short, I, I lose the the whole sixty dollars, and I'm like, okay, now I have ninety left, and and I thought I knew what I was doing. Like my logic was so bad. Like I'm not even gonna get into it. But but then I'm like, okay, I have ninety dollars left. I'm either going to make make some out of it, or I'm on you know just trick it off anyway. Yeah. So I locked in. I learned like I, I locked in for a solid month. And when I say like focus, like I, some people think I just mean like, OK, you were committed. Like, no, I'm talking about, you know, I'm in my room door shut and I'm like locked in. I'm watching videos. I'm studying. I'm, I'm learning all the indicators. I'm doing everything. And I'm self-taught. You know, I didn't have I didn't have any you know, I didn't have money just to be going and buying all these courses, asking Buy courses. Yeah. Getting one on one sessions and stuff like that. Well, I, Isaac, you, you're in school. What, what are you currently majoring in? Are you are you a finance major at all? Or? No, really. I'm, I'm a communications major. Communications major. So this is all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> <That's laughs> like, like, yeah. I, yeah so, I used to be a comm major. So like I'm uh, at this point, I'm, you know, I'm so locked in and I, I learn, you know, I learn enough about it. And, e and even then, I still didn't know as much as I know now, obviously. Sure. But, you know, I, I'm locked in for a full month. And I want to say from May, I turned one from beginning of May or maybe mid. Yeah. Beginning of May, I had 150 by June 15th. I had 50,000. Now, can you say that one more time? Like you said, 150, dollars $150. And then you, you, and in a month it was what? 50,000. Like 50 with like 50 K. Yeah. $50,000. Okay. No, but that's not, that's not even the best part. That's not even okay. the best part. Okay. Okay. See, at this time, I don't know it yet, but I'm considered a, by definition, a Robin Hood trader. One of these yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, young college kids that threw money in the market, made a whole bunch yeah. of money, think, think they know what they're doing. That was me. And I, I'm, uh, I'm 100% okay with admitting that. That was me. Because all yeah. I did study it. Where the flag proud, man? <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. it's a part of my story. So, like, yeah, for sure. So even though I thought, honestly, and I'm not one of those people who were just like, yo, let me just YOLO some money. Like, you know, I was like making informed decisions, but mm -hmm. I still didn't know enough about the market and like just how it worked and even certain indicators. I still wasn't, you know, aware of all that. So, you know, that 50,000 and this is going to hurt that 50,000, you know, I took a little bit of it out, maybe a few hundred. And then that 50,000, I want to say, give it about two or three weeks maybe less that it turned it was right back at 5k wow maybe maybe four three or four honestly oh how did that how did that feel like that's the, now, here's you know the, what I, mean? I mean that hurts me it's not yeah, that hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing about it here's the thing about it some people go through losses like that right especially when it comes to the stock market and they will go there's a fork in the road some people go over here and say stock market's a scam this that and the third right some people stick with it. I was one of the people who stuck with it because, you know, I wasn't, obviously I was hurt, dog. Oh my gosh, I went to bed. Yeah, I yeah. woke up 2, 2 a.m. Like, is that real? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, the Lord had shown me the possibilities, right? Uh -huh. Like the, 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 the result of like hard, can, just, just focus. It can happen for you. Yeah. 
it can happen. I'm like, yo, like name another mm. craft where you could just wake up one day and in one month, starting from one hundred fifty dollars, completely change your life around and just make fifty k. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I had already, I had, I had seen that. You that see what you messed up. Yeah, I saw it. Like the possibilities were, were like, if I had one fifty, what can I do with two thousand five, six, seven, mm. ten? You know yeah. what I mean. So, so what I did was I wasn't discouraged. I was still, you know in the house locked up for real. And, you know, I kept studying. I, I I did not stop. And then that, you know, wherever I had left that between two to 5,000, I turned it into, you know, a hundred thousand in less than seven months. So I all mean, I did was bounce this back. Is, this is a, I mean, you're saying it in a way, cause I, I get it. Like you lived it and you've experienced it. So it doesn't sound crazy to you. But it doesn't, I, I, it doesn't honestly not anymore. As many times as I told the story, it doesn't sound. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's phenomenal, bro. <laughs> I mean, phenomenal is not even the word. This is insane. Like, <laughs> one hundred fifty to fifty, back to two thousand to a hundred thousand. Like, people don't do that in a decade. Yeah. You're talking about doing that in less than six months. You're you're jumping classes, man. You're going from that's like going from like a lower class to like upper middle. Like you're class. going, yeah, you're going from like being eligible for a stimulus check. To not being able to that's, that's can, I, can, I, can I tell you? Can I tell you about 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 that? What you just said? Not even the stimulus check part, but the fact that you know, a year ago I didn't know a damn thing about taxes. Now I'm like, what the Whoa. heck do I? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm talking to my mom, and I'm talking to my mom. She's like, yeah, you have to. You're probably under. You have to talk to my tax guy. He's, he, you know, she talks about how good a tax guy is, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm like, wait, I have to. What percentage of of who? Like, yeah, they didn't. Like, I'm like, they didn't make that money. Like, what, yeah, yeah, like, like, like <laughs> they weren't in there. Right? Like, <laughs> they weren't like, studying with me in the room. That's what I'm saying. But it's a good problem to have, man. For it's sure. a great problem yeah. to have. So, Isaac, my question for you though, man, is like, so I think where a lot of people, especially like with without starts off in the stock market without a lot of capital, mm -hmm. like the biggest like concern I hear from people is that they need like twenty five thousand dollars, I think it is, to day trade. Because day trade is when you can like buy and sell unlimited amount of times yeah. to make the most amount of money. One hundred and fifty dollars, and you also need money to make money in the stock market. Yeah, exactly. How how are you? How are you like executing your trades without being able to day trade and like with that little bit of capital early on? Like, can you take us through like the day to day of the trades that you were making? Yeah. So so, and that's a very interesting interesting you know question you just asked because. A lot of people say, man, if I had this amount of money, I'd be at a day trade. I'd be making a whole lot of money. But you can't right. you can't manage what you have. How you going to manage? I, <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't right. manage 50K when I first had it. Yeah, right? Right. Absolutely not. And then that's why I went right back where I was. Right. Mm, but, yeah. you know, one thing I would say that I did, you know, at the time, you know, the market was very volatile, mm -hmm. you know, as, as you know, the market just moved with the coronavirus news and the coronavirus news was here one day, Daily, yeah. here one day right? And the market right. just reflected that. Right. So what I did really is that, so with Robinhood, you have three day trades for every five days. Okay. So when I traded, if I traded, if I bought and sold the same contract within the same day on Monday, three times, I couldn't do it again until next week. Mm -hmm. So one, I had to use my day trades very, you know, very carefully. I had to be very smart about it. And another thing I had to, you know, really try to follow the trend of certain companies. I didn't, it wasn't rocket science for me. I didn't try to, oh man, I had to really research to find what companies are going to do what on this day and move that much on this day. I really just focused on a few different companies, small companies. And I looked at how they moved after hours. Okay. Because the market doesn't close at four for, for, you know, the market can still move, you know, after four because people who are buying, selling shares. And it opens before people before the before 930, really, when people are still buying and selling. So I looked at a lot of companies who really moved a lot after hours. So I would just do a whole bunch of swing trades. So mm -hmm. if if say just Apple, for example, say Apple was at, you know, 200. And I realized that, OK, Apple usually moves five to ten dollars after hours. And they've been doing it for the past two or three days. So I would actually just buy something right before close, sell it as soon as the market opened in the morning. Mm -hmm. And and that was just one of my one of my strategies. And that didn't work all the time because like like Apple's not going to do that same movement all the Every time. Every single time. Right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. sometimes I sometimes I miss on that. But then another another thing is that I wasn't greedy at all. I couldn't be. 
because if I saw money I didn't have, I had to take that money. So, right. you know, when I had 150 and I'd hop in a trade that cost me you know, a contract that cost me $15, if I saw a $10 profit, I took that $10 profit. Mm. Right. If I saw a $20 profit, I took that. If I saw a $5 profit, I took that. Right. Because these little wins add up. They add up super oh, fast, too. Yeah, a lot of people would be like, man, if it's not $50 or I know if it's not $100, I can't take it. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yo, like they, they, I get DMs all the time. Yo, I want these big wins. Like, how do I get like you? How do I get those big wins? And I'm like, okay, here's what you need to do. First off, a big win is only dependent upon the size of your account. Mm, so if I have $100,000 in my account and I gain a 1%, you know, I, I have a day gain of 1%, that's a thousand dollars. Right. That may be huge for you, mm -hmm. but in my account, that's only a 1% gain. A 1% gain isn't anything. Because if you have a hundred, yeah, yeah. you know, if you have a hundred dollars in your account and you get one percent gain off a hundred dollars, you'll be like, well, that's nothing. Right. You know what I mean? But it's only it's all relative. Of, uh, yeah, it's all relevant to the size of your account. So I tell people all the time, like, take these wins. Like, take if you see look, first of all, if you see money that you did not have to work for, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have yesterday. That's what I'm saying. And so that 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 was my thing. I wasn't mm -hmm. I, I couldn't afford to be greedy because it wasn't like I could just deposit more money in my bank account. I mean, mm -hmm. from my bank account. It, it was triple zero over there. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely couldn't do that. And, and just, but, and but just, that, like a, just real quick, um, you mentioned it or oh, Nick asked about the like the limitations about like Robin Hood, for instance, only allows you to do three day trades uh, in a week. So you mentioned swing trades. Can you just briefly explain what a swing trade is to, to the audience in case they don't understand what that means? So a, a swing trade is pretty much when you buy, you know, a contract or you buy a share of a company and you just sell it at a later date. For me, I was I was a very short term swing trader. I'd buy on Tuesday afternoon and then I'd sell Wednesday morning. So it wasn't it wasn't like, you know, some people who like to get really far, you know, hold it for a really long time. Like me, I was all about trying to increase my net worth little by little very quickly so if, if it wasn't for that um that limitation that three the three a week you would probably you would have probably have just done more in a day as opposed to even swing trading just oh, overnight. overnight yes but the day trading thing is a blessing and a curse because if a lot of if, if a lot of people you know a lot of people may be mad because oh man i'm missing an opportunity right now because i don't have any day trades but if people were given the opportunity they'd probably make a lot more bad decisions Mm. you know fall in degree because people don't understand like the market is like it's it, it's less skill more mental like the market moves on two different things greed and fear mm. right you have the indicators you know different type of indicators that let me know how people are feeling right mm. that's all it is like it's supply and demand and you know, like it's like i feel like nick and i talk about the market and we always look at it as like a psychology right it's like yeah. if you understand people people in business often react the same way. So you mentioned like coronavirus. So the market was up and down strictly based off of what the news was that day. It's not logical. Yeah. yeah. yeah sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's not logical at all. But okay. that's why I tell people like, like until like you, you won't be a good trader unless you do a few things. First, you have to detach yourself away from the money. Mm -hmm. You have to, because, you know, you can't get too happy when you're up. You can't get too sad when you're down. And and I don't think people understand how psychological it is because there'll be days where, you know, I have bad losses some days that I, I have a two thousand dollar loss, you know, and, you know, I don't try to make up or let me let me get in these whole bunch of trades to make, make up that two thousand or I don't I don't say, man, I'm not going to you know, I don't give up. Sure. You know, sometimes you, you're going to have losses. You're going to have wins. So you, you just have to win whether you lose. But a lot of people, man, they let emotion take over. Like yeah. I know people who are down twenty five dollars. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm down $25. But you know, they're dead. up $25. Yeah, yeah, and then they get up $25 and they're like, man, it's only $25. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you right. You gotta be level. You gotta be yeah, level. Right, right. So, I mean, that's interesting you say that. And again, you're 20 years old. So to have this crazy. Kind of crazy. mindset and the ability to understand, like, just how complicated we are as, as humans, right? Like, that's a, that's a lot that's to say. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, to, to even understand that. Now, um, you mentioned like your background, like, you know, being a, a collegiate athlete. Do you think having that background and that like discipline played a role in, in how you like play the market? Um, hmm. That's a good question. I, I, I definitely think it definitely gave me some edge, but I want to say 
more so I, I was I would say more so towards when I lose. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna let my emotions tell me that I can't do something. So when I took those early losses in the beginning, I wasn't like, man, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna lose all my money. I was like, nah, I'm gonna figure this thing out. Like, right. like yeah, I'm yeah. I'm locked in. Like I, I may lose here, lose here, but I'm I'm gonna get right. And eventually it's, it's gonna be worth it. That was my whole mindset. It's still my mindset now. Yeah. Yo, Matt, so how how did your family and friends take this? Like what what did they say when you explained, like, yo, I just made you know 50 <laughs> no. racks in a month? <laughs> so the real question I want to hear is like when you told him you had 50K and then the next day you're like, uh, did I say 50? I meant like three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was crazy because I remember my biggest day was, you know, when I first started, right before I actually just jumped to hit that 50K mark, I had made 20K in one day. And I remember waking up on my mom's couch. Like, I don't want to say mom's couch because it makes it seem like I'm, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was home from I was home. Oh, man, from you college. Young. You're, you're allowed to say mom's couch. Man. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Look, I was home from college, and you know, I was on the couch at my house. I just and, yeah. you know, I look at my phone, and that thing says 10k, and it's at 9:30. 10k profit, right? And I'm like, I blink a few times. I'm like, okay, that's ridiculous. Crazy. And then. I'm, as I'm walking to my mother's room, like excited, like, yo, mom, you have to wake up and look at this. As when I show her the phone, it says 20K now. And she looks at the phone. She says, what am I looking at? I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I, I'm like, I don't even know. Mama, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> and, <You're rich. laughs> I made it. <laughs> and, and my mom boy made it, mom. <laughs> and it's crazy because my mother, although she was like, of course, that, that's amazing. But when I told her, like, man, I like low key, like, blew all of that. Now she wasn't like, oh my goodness, this, that, and a third. She was like, now you know. Wow. And my mom's like, my mom's so level headed, like, like she, she, she takes everything and she can dissect it and see it for what it is. Wow. Like she, she wasn't thinking. She never like she wasn't thinking in the moment, and or it wasn't being emotional in the moment. Like, no. Nah, yeah, this is the she, greatest thing ever. She like she knew that like something bad, like the good and bad was in both. Yeah, it's life. Exactly. Right. Like she told him, she like when I showed her 20K profit, she was like, wow, that's really good. She wasn't jumping for joy or anything. I knew she was happy. Like, right, right, I know right. my mother. Yeah. But when I told her, like, yo, like, that's not the case anymore, it's like, she was like, well, you can't, you're going to lose. And you, you, like, it's a stock market. You're going to lose. How big you lose is going to be based on you and like what your strategy is now moving forward. And I was like, and she don't she don't know nothing about the market. Like I was just gonna say, does she is she involved in like is she is no I be trying to put her on like she she's busy and stuff like that. But like so mom, I, take my affiliate link, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like she doesn't, you know, I'm still kind of teaching her about the market and stuff, but um, you know, that's what she told me. And after that, like I definitely felt you know better about it. You know, mm -hmm. however good you can feel after losing that much money, but sure, sure. Yeah. But I mean that 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 all that matters, right? Like just like when you're playing sports, like after a bad game, if you got that right encouragement, like you weren't, you know, thinking like, oh, I got to quit. This ain't for me. head down, yeah. Yeah, to have that support yeah. is like all the difference in the world. That's that's incredible. But like I said, I could lose, I could lose 50,000 tomorrow and it, I would stay laser focused because I've seen, not that, not that I want to. Don't yeah, yeah. Wrong, but, <laughs> I call wood. But, <laughs> with the possibilities, man. And then, mm -hmm. you know, once I started teaching other people, you know, first I started with my friends. And like when I first started, like I had maybe 1,100 followers mm -hmm. and everybody was following me because of basketball or because okay. of friends of me, not because of any of this stuff. Sure. But, you know, when I actually started teaching people and, you know, I kind of got a little bigger. People from my college started hitting me up. You know, I taught this one dude and this is what I knew, like, OK, I'm really out here maybe changing people's lives. And I, and I think it's corny when people say that sometimes. But it's real. Oh, it's changed real. My life. You changed my life. Like, nah, like, I changed my life for real. Yeah. And then, you know, I had this one guy hit me up. His name's Jimmy. He went to my old school and he said, yo, dog, I just took your class and I had three three thousand dollars and I just made twenty nine thousand a day. Ooh. And he was like, yo, you changed my life. And then, we, and then when I'm That's reading so that, dope. I was like, man, maybe I did. Wow. And then now, like now, like my audience has grown like I have around like 13, 13 and a half, 14,000 followers by now. Um, you know, I, I've been able to from, you know, 
college students to single mothers to people who just wanted an extra stream of income. You know, I actually had one of the admins for my group chat that I have of like has well over a thousand people now. Just we was on we were on the phone the other day just talking about, you know, whatever. And she said, you know what? I was so skeptical before even joining the group. And I now use the stock market, you know, using the strategy you taught me and I'm paying off my next semester doing this. Wow. I'm like, yo, that is crazy. That's got to be the best feeling though, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. Yeah, like, I get goosebumps just talking about it. Like yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. Like seeing people who say, yo man, like I just took my, and it's corny because you see a lot of people say like, yeah, flip that stimulus check, start a business. But like, nah, like. Seriously, do it. <laughs> and and i always make it a point because like there's some people out here who will take you know have these courses or i don't want to i don't want people to call me a guru like i i don't like the the what what's behind that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Right, people right, who yeah, sell yeah. these courses people take these courses maybe don't understand or whatever and have questions and then you kind of leave them you know leave them out to dry like to this day, like from the journey between 1100 followers to 13 and a half, however many I have now, like I've made it a point to respond to, to everybody. And, so, and now and now it's, uh, it's definitely difficult now because I get I may get 50 a lot of people, requests. You know, yeah. I, you know, all the time. But, you know, I, I try to think about where I was when I started. And man, if I had to and, and I did as I got a little more money. And I was able to branch out a little bit. You know, I'm always looking for more education, like where, where, wherever I can find it, I will get it. I'm not, you know, I may, I may just take another stock market class just to see if somebody has a different perspective on something. Like, I'm not like, like I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to get better. Like, right. Look at LeBron James, best basketball player in the world, talking about what he needs to work on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I'm not comparing myself to LeBron James. That's just perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but is that yeah. He, no matter how much talent you're born with or, you know, you develop, you still got to practice every day. And that's what a lot of people – I'm glad you make that parallel. That's something we try to stress to people is, like, look at professional athletes. Like, LeBron is 6'9", a crazy athlete, athlete naturally, but he still practices every day, even though he just won a championship last year. That's that's exactly. that's really important, man. You you gotta you gotta yeah. stay stay focused and constantly trying to improve. One hundred percent. And it's crazy. You, like when you mentioned basketball, I remember one of the things I struggled with is I had a passion conflict. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that you know my passion has always been basketball, hundred percent from the time I was younger. It's always been basketball. So when this came about, and I realized I had like the same kind of passion behind my entrepreneurship you know, all the stock market, the business stuff I have now, I, I felt like, yo, like, okay, because I'm passionate about this, what does that mean for basketball now? Because it was like, I found myself spending as much time thinking about, you know, even doing my business stuff, you know, and, and my, the basketball part, like sometimes, some days, like in the quarantine, I wasn't even thinking about it. So I was like, yo, so I kind of, I kind of had to, like, there was like something in me, like, yo, like, does this mean I don't love basketball? And I was like, no, no, of course I love basketball. <laughs> like, like, are you kidding me? Like, of course, like, I love basketball, right? It's always been my thing. But yeah. one thing that isn't stressed, especially in our community, is that you can be, you can be passionate about multiple, multiple things. things yeah. And I didn't, and I didn't know that because I wasn't necessarily taught that you know, by people who are around me in the basketball world, it was always basketball, basketball, basketball. Right. But one thing that helped me, that one thing that helped me get through that, even before I even had this conflict was, I remember my mother always saying, you know, you're more than a basketball player, you know, like you can, you can be anything. Athlete. <laughs> like more than I athlete, want you to be yeah. the best player you can be, but you can be more than, you're more than that, right? Don't limit yourself. And, you know, when thinking about that, I was actually like, okay, she says that, you know, but what does that look like? And then I looked at my I looked at my favorite players, Kobe Bryant at the time, you know, rest in peace. You know, he's a he's a investor, entrepreneur. Look at Shaquille yeah. O'Neal, yeah. basketball player, investor. Look at LeBron James, do owes multiple franchises. While still player. even doing his original passion. Look at Kevin Durant. At the highest level. Exactly. The best score in the league, Kevin Durant. Yeah. Investor, entrepreneur. All these dudes are uh, the, the people who I look up to. You know, I looked at them for for not what they did on the court, but who they who they actually are. 
Bro, I even think about like rappers, like, you know, their passion might be rap, but then, you know, like say like a 50 cent and he also has like a, a, you know, liquor. He also has TV shows. It's like, you know, I can, I can have multiple lanes, even though my passion might be hip hop and making music. I'm doing all these other types of things. You know, one thing that, that stuck out to me, I think Kobe said it. Mm -hmm. He said, and, and man, like I've, I've been a Kobe fan since I was 10. Like he was my first favorite player, but, and I was looking at it you know, after he died, and then I was, I was tore up about that. And I just happened to just watch, be watching one of his videos. And I remember him saying, basketball isn't who I am, it's what I do. Mm. And I was like, damn. That's real. That could be me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is you. That's all of us, right? Like, that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah, we're not, like, why, why limit ourselves to one thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, and I tell people all the time, like, yo, I'm not a superhero. I don't try to claim to be a genius. I'm just... Uh, a college college kid who happens to be an athlete who doesn't limit himself just to, you know, how many, you know, buckets he can, you know, how many points he can score in the game. But, you know, I, I've taken great pride in how I can provide value in other people's lives. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's bigger than anything. Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, if, if you, if you can't really make an impact on somebody's life or, or if I was just out here making a hundred thousand dollars, whatever, 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 but I provided nothing to anybody else then how do I really feel about that? Like, am I, am I happy because happy for myself or, you know, while other people are could use the information I have to better themselves, like what can I do? So definitely like when I'm, when I, it, I think I'm so good at what I I'm doing right now is because it's not, I don't really think about it from a money standpoint. Mm. You know, I want to grow my trading group because I want more people to know about it. I want to advertise on certain platforms because I want more people to get into this because they don't teach you about this in school for a reason. Nah. <laughs> yeah. No, and now, to be honest, that's kind of like the whole basis of our, our podcast, right. It's like, you know, like the tagline is like, there's 99 hustles, choose one. Right. So it's like there's all these things and all these avenues to, to make money, to get yourself in a situation where you're not like stuck in the same nine to five grit. You know what I mean? Like the same that, that rat race. Intro wheel. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, the best way to to like help others is to pass on information you receive yep. right so like each one teach one right so it's like like and i'm glad you said that and you, you mentioned like you know um w would you be happy if you were making all this money but not helping anybody else um with that and where you're at currently are you happy at this point i'm very happy very at this point right. i've taught since since the beginning of june like end of may you know, I've taught over 3,000 people. Wow. You know, I've grown the trading group to over 1,000 people. Wow. And, and it's only getting, and, and you know, it's only getting crazier. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, I wanted, and, and somebody asked, you know, where do you see this thing going? Like, you know, I honestly, I couldn't even give them an answer because I did not think I'd be here right now. Mm. But, okay. So, but you know, if I'm thinking towards the future, like I want to grow as big as I can. I don't want to limit, like I said, I don't want to ever limit myself. Like, you know, I want to get people into real estate. You know, one of the things I hate is, you know, in the black community, gentrification. I want to, mm -hmm. like, I want to invest in real Especially estate. Especially around Howard, it's crazy. And, and, yeah, and I'm it's from crazy. Atlanta. I'm originally from Atlanta. It's crazier okay. down there. You know, North Carolina. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. You know, and for sure around Howard, I see it all the time. Yeah, so that, you know that's one another avenue I want to go in go into eventually. But there's so many man, there's so many avenues for wealth. Like you said, 99 hustles. But like, yeah. there's so many things. There's so many things, and like people don't have to be listening. Yeah. yeah, and so Isaac, we you don't we, we when we talk about the market, we definitely we do got to ask you though, man. Like like currently, like what's going on, like the the whole Reddit like traders mm -hmm. and GameStop like went up like five thousand percent in like a week you know what i mean could you could you break down for our audience like what happened with gamestop um were you involved in all were, were you trading gamestop like you got a a reddit were you on reddit in those forums or you know can you just like break that down for our audience yeah so so first to answer your first question so what i know of of, of what happened is that okay there are these big hedge funds and these hedge funds have the money to move the market because they, they have billions of dollars. So when they decide to short a market or short a particular stock, short meaning they're betting that the stock is going to go down, they dump a whole bunch of money in there. They, they have enough manpower to, to, to 
you know, manipulate influence the market. The market. <laughs> yeah. And so what these Reddit, you know, they call it Wall Street bets people, you know, with a bunch of they call themselves the, the, the degenerates, which is weird. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call themselves. They, you know, they spoke out and said, yo, these, these we, we put money in the market in, in some stocks and we want to have wins. But when somebody like these hedge fund hedge funds come and shorts the market and causes the, you know, the, the stock to drop, we lose our money and we can't get it back. But when they lose money, they get bailed out. Mm. So they get a billion dollar bailout. Right. So they were like, you know what? We're going to look at the top five, top 10 most shorted stocks. GameStop was like number one. So they were like, yo, uh, I forgot the name. Melvin Capital is is one of these hedge funds that is shorting this stock we're going to run it up we're going to run it up and we, we want them to lose all their money so they put like i think i think don't quote me on this that melvin capital put around 13 billion into Ooh. into shorting gamestop and for every so much that gamestop went up they lost one billion dollars so i think it was like every 33 th- some dollars and they ended up losing all their money so much so that they had to sell you know, other positions to make up for that. And so that was the whole big revolution against these hedge funds. Like, yo, the little guy wants to win. Right. And then you had, you know, these stocks having to, uh, you know, stop trading for certain companies and all that other stuff. And it's crazy because I actually, AMC was one of them. And I actually called out AMC on my Instagram maybe a week before it happened. Wow. I did not know anything about Wall Street bets or any. I didn't. Right I, I had no idea, right? I just called it out based off charts and you know using logic, strategy, and all that stuff. And I was like, "Yo, uh, AMC right now is at two thirty three. I have a target of what I say, like it was like seven forty or something like that. And then that's when I'm going like, I see it going there, right? Seven forty. And my Instagram is kind of you know it's grown to the point where I, I kind of have a tribe of people that trust my word and things like that. Even though I tell people like, it's not financial advice, of course. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> like do your d- due diligence. This is, yeah. this, is what, this is just what I see. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people hopped in with me at like two, around two to $3. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we hit our um, mark. You know, it, it, it goes up faster than I thought. I'm, I told people like, I have like 2,500 shares. I'm just going to hold this. You know, this may be a slow play, not because I don't like to throw out my more aggressive plays because I, I do all, I claw out my plays in the trading group. Got it. So Instagram's more just like, yeah, uh, I, here's, here's I, a light I, play. You know yeah. I mean? Like, yo, y'all watch this style. Y'all watch this. So I usually give long holds. Okay. You know, for the, you know, like this is a hold, you know, sell this at a later day, whatever. Got it. You know, then a few days later, like AMC kind of goes up to like $5. I'm like, dang, that's kind of fast. I wasn't really. <laughs> You know, and they actually, AMC actually received like this bailout from this company, I mean, from whoever, and then now they weren't going to go bankrupt anymore. So, so that was what really pushed it. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I sold, yeah, yeah, I sold a little bit, you know, a few shares. I sold, I, I wish I didn't, but I sold around, <laughs> I, was, I sold around 1,500 shares. So I, I, I know I had around 1,500 left. So we're, we're moving forward and I'm thinking like, okay, my next target is, my first target was like six something, my next target seven something. I'm going to sell at seven. All of a sudden I hear, I'm, I'm going through Twitter, AMC's next, AMC's next. And I'm like, what? Well, AMC's next. <laughs> like, 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 right, right, yeah. I'm like, yo. Like, and then all of a sudden I, I catch wind of what's going on and AMC hits like, hits $20. Wow. Like, and I'm like, yo, and I wake up and I'm up like 15 grand. And I'm like, yo. I'm sure your, your, your group chat was bumping that morning. Dude, my Instagram group said, yo, how'd you wow. know? Like, 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 yo. <laughs> like, you know, I, I told him, like, yo, I, I wasn't a part of none of that. Like, you I don't miss. <laughs> exactly. Like, you look at my Instagram, like, I posted it back in, like, it has to be a week and a half before any of this Reddit stuff happened. squeeze, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, that's crazy. And I'm so glad I put it out because I got so many DMs of people like, yo, man, you just gave me, like, extra so-and-so like yo you cr- this is crazy blah 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 blah. and i told people i, I made it to tell my group like don't get used to this like, <laughs> like please don't like and, and think you know what you're doing or whatever right. or like this is something like that probably won't happen again but especially now, for that reason you you talking about this and breaking this down which was which is amazing because i think you were able to like make that you know what was 
pretty much complicated, at least in the news, like the headlines. Like they yeah. didn't, yeah, they didn't tell you like anything. All you knew was little guys fighting big guys, little guys. That's what it was. It was it was the battle of you know David and Goliath. A bunch of these, yeah, millennial and Gen Z people who have a good amount of money, mm-hmm. enough money to come together, like millions, million, like a couple million people, fun, like put money in the GameStop versus this billion dollar hedge fund. So it was like billions on billions. Like who's going to win the tug of war, right? <laughs> and then, you know, it, it was. I heard, I heard this great this great comment during this whole thing. They're like, "This is what uh uh what is it called um takeover? What was that the, the the group that went on? Um, Occupy uh, Occupy, Occupy Wall, Wall Street. Street. Yeah, They're like they had the wrong game plan. They should have did this ten years ago. This is yeah. this would have really got the game. At, uh, yeah, this is ridiculous. I, I this is the, that was the craziest thing I've ever heard of though. No, so uh, so speaking of of. of you know, crazy plays. What was the play that you made that original play that took you from 150 to 20,000 when you were showing your mom? Like what, what, what was that stock? Um, it was a mix of a few stocks where I just, you know, like you said, more money makes money. So I went from 150 to 250, 250, maybe to 400, 400 to 700, 700 to 1500 so I kept, I kept so it wasn't one specific play that took you from 150 to 20 no but okay. then but but then there was you know i hopped in i hopped in amazon and tesla at the same time and i had enough money to get like a few contracts each which is pretty expensive yeah um and you know they end up going up a hundred dollars after hours at the same time mm. and so my contract i was up like something like a crazy percent yeah it was 2020 was definitely a great year for Amazon stock like that. And Tesla. <laughs> Amazon, Both Tesla, Amazon. Apple, they all, they all had a... Then they end up crashing all at the same time. So yeah, I got yes, caught in yeah. that trying to... Oh, okay. Now it makes sense how you made such a drastic drop. It's like, yeah. okay. okay. I had to ride away too long. And you're, you're, you're in micro strategies. Pretty, I see you post about that also a lot. That stock, I think it's called... Oh, yeah, micro. I love micro strategy is a... That's a logical play of mine. So... okay. So it goes into cryptocurrency now. Now we're in the cryptocurrency world where we're looking at we're looking at companies. So, you know, MicroStrategy was an early investor in crypto in Bitcoin. And on their balance sheet, Bitcoin is an asset. And Bitcoin is a right now is an appreciating asset, right? So, so the at, companies at, because it's an asset, as that asset increases in value, so does the company because the company mm. itself invested in them. So because MicroStrategy is a early investor in Bitcoin, now I'm not looking at, I don't, I don't care what MicroStrategy does as a company. Like, obviously I do, but right now I'm not really worried about it because they're, they got in at Bitcoin at such a great price. All these other companies are following suit at later. And all, all that's going to do is drive up Bitcoin even more. And you have, you know, the higher ups now talking about how we're going to you know, get cryptocurrency as an actual form of payment for a lot of different, you know, places now. Yeah, so now, Tesla just announced they're going to start accepting Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's one of the other things, too. So now it's like, OK. What 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 what's Bitcoin's path now? And I can only see good things about Bitcoin. So that's going to directly reflect on micro strategy. So right now I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I bought into micro strategy and I just wait. Bitcoin jumps to an all-time high like every two or three weeks. Now I just have to wait because as soon as it jumps, like right now it's, it's been sitting around between forty-five and forty-seven thousand for the past couple of days now. Soon it hit, soon as it hits fifty k, and who knows how long, MicroStrategy is gonna just go crazy again, and I'm gonna be right there. I'm just gonna be you know chilling. So that's that's just <laughs> one, of the, one of the logical plays, right? That you know, that's why I like to, that's why I like about the stock market. Some people ask me why I don't like forex. I don't dislike forex. I think forex is more complicated and I don't like how you can't apply logic to Forex. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to do, be locked in on the screen all day. Like, you know, I can apply more logic to the stock market and, uh, you know, make moves just based on what the world's doing at the time. Isaac, man, I, I tell you what, I mean, you just have a, a, a incredible story. I can tell you, this is one of my, this is one of my favorite episodes we recorded. For sure. Um, like one of the most important takeaways that I think like a lot of people can get from Isaac's story is like the balancing of, of, of being an athlete, recognizing you can have other passions, um, you know, not limiting yourself to just one thing. Um, Cause I know a lot of people who like, you know, athletes ought to graduate college 
And then there's like a there's like a depression period. You know what I mean? If we were being honest, because you know, people have dedicated two a day, whether it's like football, two a days every day for like 15 years. Not, not only that, but but yeah. years, years of their life before that. You know, yeah, college yeah. athletes are most likely been playing the good portion have been playing for since they were oh, like kids. Right. You know what I mean? Since they were like six, seven years old, man. And mm-hmm. and, and and for you to recognize another passion. Um, also like a way to, to support yourself and generate wealth for your family. Uh, it's an incredible story. It's, you at know, 20. Like, at 20 years old, man. Hats That's off. the craziest part. Yeah. I appreciate that, yeah. man. It's incredible. Uh, and, and it's crazy because, you know, it, it's kind of like a wave where people see that in my bio, I make sure to put Howard men's basketball because I, my goal is like, I don't want like, I don't want the guru label like at all. I don't want people to be like, oh yeah, he's the you know the the lord of trading like nah yeah, <laughs> yeah. like i want people to see that yo i am a like i am an at i'm a student athlete i'm somebody who you may see on tv just hooping you know what i mean like yeah. and it's crazy because i get i've gotten so many other hoopers from from i've gotten people that you know from duke duke basketball california basketball old miss like from a lot of major programs to smaller programs i've got a couple overseas hoopers couple people who you know got some clemson guys on the you know football football everywhere like, i have a lot of athletes uh, who hit me up yeah. who are like yo like let me i want to get into this trading like i have like my boy i got a couple people who are actually in the nba right now who are like yo so i'm making this money and well, I, I do it so you know what to do it like where like mm-hmm. what should i be thinking like I, I never give financial advice i only give you know like when people ask me i give them an answer you know what i mean you know i got friends you know my, one of my teammates uh mccore maker uh, five star, you know, out of Australia, definitely going to the league. And he's like, yo, man, that's something I got to get into when I get to the league, you know, just because, you know, I'm trying to be on the same type of time. Like, yo, like, you know, like this wealth, this, this, there's only a few ways you can get like wealthy, right? Even in, even the NBA is in the avenue to wealth. Mm-hmm. Only a few people in the NBA are going to be Actually, wealthy, yeah. right? The LeBron James are going to be wealthy. The Steph Curry's are going to be wealthy. And you could probably name like maybe a handful more. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not yeah. a lot. <laughs> Maybe five or six more who are currently in the league right now, right? You know, and, and the smart ones in the league, they invest. You 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 get wealthy by like real estate, uh, the, the business investments, having your own business. And I've studied many, many, many wealthy people, and they all have the same. They they have different stories, but they all end up in the same you know avenues: stock mm-hmm. market, real estate, business. So. so and, and it's funny you say that because like everyone we've we've spoken to and interviewed and had on the show, um, for the most part, they all do different things, but they all have similar traits, mm-hmm. right? They all have the ability to like see the long play with things, not to be easily discouraged, but also having the mentality of like, just because I do this doesn't mean this is all I'm going to do. Like everyone we spoke to is like, yeah, my next thing, I want to get into this. I want to get into that. And you already are talking about real estate you're not even like a full year into teaching to like what you're doing. Right. So it's like that mindset of always thinking of, you know, what's the next thing that's, oh, yeah, that's I'm just thinking ahead. Yeah. And it's weird. Cause like, I've had to like have like people come in and like help me manage things now. And, and, it, and it's crazy. Like just, just the growth. But then I think about like, man, I have literally, and, and it's, and it's awesome because I've, I've been given nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom used to tell me like, and I'm so glad she did it. So a hundred. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't be where I am if she didn't do it because there'd be times I want to go out with my friends, even in high school. Like I want to do this, then the third. And I'd be like, yo, can I get like 20 bucks? You know, whatever. She'd be like, and my mom, she, she works a very, really good job. She's, you know, she's, she's, she's self-made herself. Like she came from nothing. And then she didn't give me nothing, but financially she made sure I came from like the same place. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, I had the clothes I wanted. You know, I had, you know, I had shoes, I had, you know, a uh, roof over my head, I had all, all I could eat. But when it came to like me wanting to do extra things, like I had nothing. Right. So yeah. you know, if I wanted to drive the car, she gave me, I had to get gas. Right. You know, if I wanted to go out with my friends to the, to the school football game, yeah. like, I had to, I had to have my own money. Right. And I'm so glad she did that because she turned, she made me mentally, she turned me into a hustler. Uh, so the even, wisdom, yeah. Yeah, even even when I was <laughs> even when I was like back at home in high school, like <laughs> I used to try to sell some of her stuff. Like, yo, <laughs> I, 
right. I was always trying to come up with a dollar. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like, need this. But I, yeah, right. I'm like, yo, I used to look at stuff like how long she just walked past that right there and not even noticed it. But you know that 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 she made me who I am today. Where like that that goes into me even to the beginning of my story when we first started off this conversation. How I started, like I knew that you know I I had 150 dollars and that's what I had. I wasn't gonna ask her for it. You know, I right. wasn't gonna answer. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I didn't even want it because I can't call myself independent if I'm I don't want to come up I didn't want to come up off a loan. I wanted to come up because I, I made it. So that's what makes it all worth it. Like, you know, I've been up really late nights, early mornings. You know, sometimes it's really hard, like with basketball. Like we have we have really hard, really long practice, or we have two a days and we got lift and I got class, like and then I have a trading group where I still have to make sure I give my best because these people so expect that. Yeah. Depending on you, right. Yeah. Right. So. So. And, and, you know, definitely I think being an athlete definitely has helped with that because I'm challenged mentally and physically a lot, you know, on the court. And, you know, I, I take that and then I come into certain situations out off the court. And I'm like, I can. This ain't nothing. It's not. Maybe, yeah, right. But you're I, you're I, I it worse. Yeah. So it all kind of ties, ties together. And, you know, where, like, I, I wouldn't change anything, man, from where I started to where I am now. Like, I've honestly, like, I, I couldn't, I didn't know what was coming for me, like, once I started this whole thing. But I'm extremely grateful. So, so, so let us, let us ask, ask you this then, Isaac. So what we typically like to ask people who come on our show is, like, what would be, like, your hustle mantra? So given your story... Um, in the business, in the life that, that you built, what, what would you kind of like use as like one phrase or one quote that kind of embodies your hustle? What would your hustle mantra be? I would say just three words or no, it's not three words. Let me change it real quick. I would say wealth is for everybody. Mm. Wealth is for everybody. Wealth is for everybody. Get because yours. There's a common misperception misconception that you know if you're not born with it you're not gonna have it but wealth is for everybody Whew. there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's a wrap for uh this week's episode um, um let's let, 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 let isaac uh shout out his um uh, your course. I, I mean listen i called a play and you over here trying to call for the ball <laughs> like, i'm gonna let isaac get i'm gonna let isaac get his shot off but let me he's open off. he's open he's open you over here <laughs> on the bench i'm like, setting the screen man you making it hot. Now the defense knows he's open. Yeah, <laughs> time out, coach. Let me, let me bring him back in here. Um, and like I said, this is a, this is a wrap for this week's episode. Uh, thanks for listening to the 99 Hustle podcast. Please be sure to visit 99hustle.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover your uh, amazing bonus content. Please rate, review, subscribe. And if, if you enjoyed this episode, um, Isaac, like Nick said, you were uh, you're one of our favorite guests. We've definitely had Great uh, uh, before we um, before we close out. We definitely want to give you the opportunity to um, shout out your your group chat um, and anything your website where people could find you. We find your course uh, and, and all those good things. Yeah, well, I mostly do everything on my. You can almost find everything about me on my Instagram, which is Isaac Suffren, just my first and last name. You know, whether it be my courses or just you know. YouTube, anything. Um, I if you have any ever have any questions, just DM me. Like I said earlier, I like to try to get back to as many people as I can in the shortest amount of time, just so I can, if you know, clarification, you know, anything like that. But you know, I'm I'm like I said, wealth is for everybody. I'm not trying to hold anything right. back, anything right. back at all. It's the, it's the, yeah, it's the beginning of your journey, man. You yeah. <laughs> next. You got to crush it, bro. Right, man. At, at uh, 20, years, 20 years old, man. I'm, I'm interested to see what the next 20 years holds for you. So uh, sure. we'll definitely have to have you back on the show to see what what uh, what next passion you came up with. Word. For sure, man. Uh, this was fun. I appreciate y'all. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Always remember, there's 99 Hustles. Choose one. 99 Hustles. <laughs>